everybody. Today I am pretty close to downtown Indianapolis, actually a little bit north of it, in truly one of my favorite neighborhoods in all of Indianapolis. Every time I come into this particular place, especially a day like today, a beautiful fall day, nice and warm, I get excited about seeing a lot of the homes in this neighborhood. I am in Heron Morton Place, definitely one of the most historic neighborhoods you're gonna find in all of Indianapolis. So we're gonna just talk about this neighborhood just a little bit, where it is, what it has to offer, so stay tuned. Hey everybody, I'm Jason Compton with the Compton Home Group. Welcome back to the channel. If you wanna know everything there is to know about neighborhoods like this, Heron Morton, or any of the historic neighborhoods in Indianapolis, or anywhere in the Indy Metro, then make sure you hit that subscribe button, tap the little bell so you're notified every time we do a new video each and every week. And we get reach outs of all kinds from people all over the Indy Metro and all over the country with questions about neighborhoods like this or other neighborhoods in the Indy Metro or even all of the suburbs as well. So if you have questions at all about any of those things, then don't hesitate to reach out any way that you know how. We'll always have your back with those questions and we'll always have your back with your move to the Indy Metro. Hey everybody, so I'm crossing the street here in, like I said at the beginning, really truly one of my favorite places. Actually, this particular area of Indianapolis, not just Heron Morton Place, but Fall Creek Place just to the north, Old North Side just to the south. That sounds kind of weird and opposite, but <laughs> Old North Side used to be the Old North Side of Indianapolis proper, but it's kind of near downtown now. But just to the north of that, you have Heron Morton Place. And it's easily one of the most historic neighborhoods in Indianapolis. And when I think of kind of vintage Indianapolis, classic Indianapolis, this neighborhood here is one of those neighborhoods that definitely comes to mind for me. So it has a huge history in this particular area. This land was acquired by Indiana back in the 1800s, and it was gonna be used, because there weren't any homes around this area at that time, as the fairgrounds, the state fairgrounds. But Civil War came along, and it had a pretty big role in the Civil War, especially kind of towards the, the middle and the end when, not great, but it was used as a POW camp for Confederate soldiers. But after the Civil War, it was then used as the fairgrounds again, but the Indiana State Fair is no longer here. It's up at the Indiana State Fairgrounds, which actually aren't all that far from here, just a little bit north and east of here. But around that time, around the turn of the century, 1890s, 1900, people from Indianapolis who really were quite wealthy started to build homes in this particular area. And they built some really elaborate, exceptionally cool homes in this area. And of course, a lot of those homes are still around today. Now, once it got deeper into that century, of course, this neighborhood started to fall into disrepair and started to suffer quite a bit. Actually, it was really kind of through the Great Depression and after that, started a, a little bit along that trend. But recently, especially here since the 1980s and 1990s, a really big effort was put to restore this neighborhood. So it is on the National Register of Historic Places. It has a lot of structures on that particular list. And when you go through here, you can really truly understand why. So there are a lot of old homes, certainly, that some of them, of course, need some repair or you know, not quite there yet, but a lot of them have been renovated significantly. Some of them were in such disrepair, of course, that it couldn't be renovated. They were complete teardowns. So as you go through here, you'll notice brand new homes mixed in with homes that are over 100 years old. But those brand new homes still have that same charm, that same feel and the architectural style, all sorts of different styles actually going through this particular area kept. So when you walk through here, it's always going to have that particular feel. Now, if you wanted to know kind of where this place was and if you're actually in this neighborhood or not, it's bordered roughly by 16th Street on the south side, 22nd Street to the north. So, you know, it's not extremely deep north to south. And then you go over to Central Avenue to the east and Pennsylvania roughly over to the west. So inside of it, though, it's for the most part extremely residential, although it does have a few things here and there that you could walk to from here. So this particular neighborhood has been pretty heavily involved with the arts. Actually, Heron High School is located here, and it's a charter school, and actually it's next to the old Heron Art School, which was 
very, very prominent, and actually still is very prominent. It's just no longer here in this neighborhood anymore. It's over at the IUPUI, the Indiana University, Purdue University campus downtown. But in that same vein, on Talbot Street, there's an enormous art fair that happens every single year. And Talbot Street's a little bit over towards the west side. Plus you have the Head Back Theater, which has the Footlight Musicals, which is definitely walkable in here and a super cool place to go and see a Broadway type show. So they've got things that happen all year long. Plus there's a few little shops, little restaurants that you can go to to eat, kind of like Baby's Burgers. That is a really good burger place, all within walking distance for the most part in this entire neighborhood here. But a lot of people will ask me, you know, some of your favorite, what are your, some of your favorite neighborhoods in Indianapolis? And I've got a lot of really, really cool places that I like. But this one here is one of those places that usually comes to mind. It's close enough to downtown, I do like that. So you could take an Uber, you could ride your bike, or you could walk if you wanted to to the downtown area. A little bit like I'm walking right now, actually. But you know, that's a decent walk to get all the way to downtown Indianapolis from here. But you could certainly ride your bike. It's actually close to the Monon Trail which is really just kind of off to the east of here. And the Monon Trail is a trail that extends essentially from downtown Indianapolis or very, very close to that, all the way through Indy, all the way up north through Carmel, and all the way up through Westfield, which is way to the north of downtown Indianapolis and Indianapolis proper. So it has a lot of walkability and the location, you know, if you want to be in the city, you want to live in a historic neighborhood, you want to live in a place where it has some serious character and just something that's going to be a little bit different. Plus, if you like neighborhoods that feel extremely established and like they really truly, crossing 20th Street here now, not a busy road, but doesn't hurt to look, of course, really have that feel that it's been here a very long time, this is one of the choices for sure. I mean, there are trees in here that are easily 100 years old, some younger, probably some older. I don't know the exact age of a lot of these trees, but they're big. And it's a fall day right now, so there's still a lot of leaves on the trees, but during the summer, the shade through a lot of these streets is just absolutely intense. Really, really a cool feel. So if you have questions at all about Heron Morton or any of the neighborhoods similar to this or anywhere nearby, and for that matter, anywhere else in the Indy Metro, then don't hesitate to reach out any way that you know how. And until the next one, we'll see you later.